Hello. Hi, Ben. Thank Hello, you so Barbara. much for coming in. How are you today? Good. Very good. Good. So let's get started. First, I'd like to mention that we're just coming to the end of the year of the dragon. You're about to celebrate um, Chinese New Year. Yeah. What animal is it next year's? Um, the next year is the year of the snake. The year of the snake. Are, are you a snake? I am a snake. You indeed. are a snake. Yeah, yeah. Go on, tell us a little bit more about it. What does it mean to be a snake? Yeah, I mean, in China culture, a snake is intelligent, smart, flexible, uh, resilience. Okay. And you're all those things. I try. I, I try to be as intelligent as I can. <laughs> I'm sure you are. So shall we get stuck in? Shall we talk a little bit more about China and high voltage industry, SF6, SF6 free and everything that China is doing to, to become um, more sustainable? Mm -hmm. So we all know China as a, a strong global manufacturing hub. It's known for its rapid economic development, modern infrastructure, you name it, all those good things. How has this shaped the country's energy needs? Yeah, indeed. Actually, in the last uh, several decades, China has gone through such a rapid uh, economic growth. Mm -hmm. And that brings also a very substantial rise on the energy demand. And as of today, China's energy consumption takes 27% of the globe. Right. But on the other side, I think it's also worth to note that uh, over the last years, energy efficiency of China has also improved significantly. And uh, according to IEA, the total energy supply per unit of GDP has decreased by 43% comparing with the year of 22 with the year of 2000. Mm -hmm. This is really a substantial improvement. How has that been achieved? I think it's a, a, a lot to do with the uh, energy tr transition, which mm -hmm. China is ongoing right now, driven by the, by the target or by the vision of 2030, 2060 carbon neutral target. China is undergoing a, a massive energy transition period. Mm -hmm. And China has invested significantly into the energy transition in the last years. If we look at the 2023, the total investment of China into energy transition reached 670 billion right. US dollars. And this is the world's largest. Mm -hmm. And uh, within all the energy consumption, about 26% of the total energy consumption come from the clean energy. And this percentage increased by 11 percent point compared with uh, 10 years ago. And in the same period, the energy supply from the coal reduced by was, 12 percent point. I was going to ask you about that. So China is a global leader in renewable energy, as you, you've just mentioned, but coal still is quite a dominant source. Yeah. So why is there such a heavy reliance on coal? Why is it so difficult to replace? I mean, historically, China was relying heavily on coal, mainly because China has an uh, abundant uh, uh, source of coal, and uh, which makes it was very easy to access and very cost efficient. So over the last decades, China has been relying on coal as the main source of the energy. But things are changing. With the demand side the electrification, more and more uh, energy consumption are shifting from the coal to the electricity. For example, the EV fast development, the data center, the, the high speed rail, the electrification of the, all the industry segments. I think today the, in China, the energy consumption, 28% of the energy consumption come from electricity. But still, there are still quite some uh, segments which are relying on coal, like the uh, industry segment, one third from electricity, but also one third from the coal. Going forward, I believe this will change very fast. With very high speed of electrification, the electricity will be more than 30% and will reach like 50% in the year 2050. And then on the supply side, meaning the power generation side, traditionally also we rely on coal a lot. But now, as you know, with the rapid growth of the renewable energy installation, uh, in the last uh, 10 years in China, the, the wind and the solar installation capacity has always been more than 40% of the total installation capacity. Also within 23, the renewable energy install capacity for the first time over the thermal power capacity. Right. Yeah. 
And going forward, this percentage will 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 just be growing even faster. So, Ben, if we look into the electrification process you've just mentioned, we know that SF6 is at the base of it. So historically, that has been the gas that has been used to make sure the grid is reliable, um, to make sure that we've got electricity in our homes. SF6 is the most potent gas when it comes to global warming potential. Mm -hmm. What progress has China made in adopting SF6 free solutions? It's a very good question. I mean, SF6 is indeed a, a very good gas in the high voltage switch gear industry. In the last five decades, it has been utilized so widely. In China, in the last decades, it has also put a lot of effort in reducing the usage of SF6. For example, there is a very tight uh, control uh, and monitor about the usage and the emission of SF6 in any of the substations. And also in China, there is a increasingly uh, tight requirement on the uh, SF6 leakage. Several years ago, this requirement has been in increased from 0.5% uh, leakage rate to 0.1% percent leakage rate, which is also a big step. And then uh, there's another big measure which China has been taking, and mainly it was taken by State Grid of China, which is the world's largest utility, is that to utilize a new gas mixture, which is instead of the pure SF6, we are using SF6 with nitrogen gas mixture. So with 30% of SF6, and 70% of nitrogen. With this, we can basically reduce the SF6 usage by about 50%. And uh, this is actually, it's, uh, I think it's a very practical solution to reduce the usage of SF6. I made some uh, uh, rough calculation. Uh, consider the huge amount of switchgear or GIS which SGCC uh, install every year. So only in the last two years, it's about uh, roughly 15,000 of GIS, 110 kV and 220 kV. In total, roughly 15,000 of GIS has been using this gas mixture. And uh, if we calculate back, this is equivalent to roughly 7,000 unit of GIS has been totally SF6 free, 7,000 units. Well, they, I think this is really a tremendous achievement. So this 50% reduction in SF6 and nitrogen mixture, so in terms of emissions, can do better. There are SF6 free mm -hmm. solutions out there. Hitachi Energy offers um, one of them. Would you tell us a little bit about how China is adopting the SF6 free technology. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. I mean, although this SF6 and the nitrogen gas mixture is quite practical, but it's only half SF6 free. So it's only, you, you only take out 50% and then it will be very hard to take out the other 50%. China is taking a lot of uh, actions to find the best way to be totally SF6 free. There have been a lot of investment uh, by the government, by the power grid uh, to invest into the technology and the product development of SF6 free switchgear. And also in China, they are actively piloting the application of the SF6 free technology and switch gears in the power grids. For example, Hitachi Energy has been uh, supplying uh, Econic GIS since 2002. I mean, we supplied uh, the first Econic 145 kV GIS to SGCC Shanghai in 22. Mm -hmm. And also we supplied the, uh, the first uh, Econic 145 kV GIS to China South Grid in last year. And more than that, uh, in the last summer, during the SIGRI, we also announced that we will supply China's first uh, 420 kV Econic dead tank breaker, which is really the first time in the transmission voltage level. It's a, it's a remarkable milestone. And even further, 
uh, two months ago, we also announced that we, we will pilot the world first 550 retrofuel technology in one of our big power plant customer. Mm -hmm. So retrofill, that's when you don't replace the equipment, you replace the gas within it. Exactly, exactly. We basically, without uh, a major uh, site work, mm -hmm. you just uh, replace the SF6 with uh, the iconic uh, retrofill gas mixture. So with China being such a vast country, how does the adoption of SF6 free technology fit in with grid expansion projects, for example? Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, China is still undergoing a very fast economic development and also very fast electrification process. And this means the power grid is becoming bigger and bigger every day. A rough number, basically every year only in a uh, state grid, we install roughly 10,000 units of GIS. Wow. That's a, a lot That's of large. SF6 utilized every year. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really the right moment to, to plan the movement towards SF6 free. Because taking this timing when we expand, we also utilize the SF6 free technology. Then you basically take two steps within one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you look at the world stage, how crucial would you say China is in decarbonizing the energy sector? Oh, that's very, very critical. As we mentioned earlier, I mean, China takes about 27% of the global total energy consumption. So the decarbonization of China for sure will have a huge impact on the global decarbonization progress. And within all the different ways of decarbonization, I think the power grid in China is playing a really pivotal role. Why? Because the role of power grid is to, on one side, connect the power generation, on the other side, connect the power consumption. And uh, as we know that in China, the power generation side is increasingly more and more on the relying on the renewable energy, which is fluctuating and, uh, and difficult to, to control. And on the other side, uh, the increasing electrification, more and more demand on the electricity. So the power grid has to be able to integrate the fast growing renewable energy and fulfill the fast increasing electricity demand. Only if the power grid can fulfill this task, the decarbonization of China can progress and according to the plan. Along this journey, I think the decarbonization of power grid itself is also getting more and more important. And uh, to utilize the SF6 free technology in the switchgear is one of the key measures to decarbonize the power grid itself. Mm -hmm. So could China's transition to these SF6 free technologies set new international standards for sustainable grid solutions, for example? I mean, standardization is very important to drive the development of the industry. Um, I remember that in the last few years, there was actually a lot of discussion within China about uh, what should be the, the way forward mm -hmm. for SF6 free. And uh, in the autumn in 23, mm -hmm. in China, we together with uh, uh, CSEE, we had the uh, industry expert meeting in Beijing. And in that meeting, all the experts commonly agreed that uh, uh, the C4 based technology is the right way forward in China to replace SF6. And also, I think China has such a huge uh, switch gear market. The application of the SF6 free technology will generate a huge amount of knowledge base in terms of product, in terms of uh, uh, operation, maintenance, and so on. And these knowledge base are really valuable for the globe. And uh, to transfer that knowledge into global standards will help a lot mm -hmm. to push forward the global SF6 free journey. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I was going <laughs> to jump there. So Ben, we've got time for one last question. Very quickly, can you tell us what you think China's energy landscape looks like for the next decade? Yeah. Let me still explain this question by 
supply side, demand side, and、uh, and the profit.、No、yeah, I think right now the renewable energy installed capacity in China is already more than the thermal power plant, and the generation based on the renewable energy is still, let's say, roughly thirty percent, and this percentage. Will grow very fast with the increased capacity of renewable energy installation, and also when the power grid is getting stronger and stronger to integrate the renewable energy. So by 2050, this percentage may grow to like 60 percent or even higher. And then on the demand side, today the electricity is about 28 percent of the total energy consumption, and with the Fast growing electrification process. This percentage will also grow to like fifty percent or even more than sixty percent. So within this journey, the power grid will play really a increasingly important role. When the power grid become more resilient, become stronger to be able to connect the supply and the demand, and also in the meanwhile, the power grid itself become more and more sustainable. By using SF6 free technology more and more, I think the entire、uh, energy system will be much more sustainable than today, and the Chinese decarbonization journey will contribute increasingly to the global decarbonization. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Ben. It's been lovely having you, and I、uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>